put your name out there. Mm-hmm. Um, so many people do not capitalize on social media, and it's such a shame because we have this at our fingertips. Like mm-hmm. our our forefathers, our wrestling ancestors, mm-hmm. did not have this. They had to physically mail tapes. Mm-hmm. All we do is click a button on YouTube, copy a link, and put it in an email. That is so easy. Mm-hmm. That is so easy. What I do is I'll go on Facebook or I'll go on, on, on Google and I'll just type in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And every company that comes up, I do this now once every two or three months, mm-hmm. I'll send an email. Right. It's the worst that happens. I don't get a response. Mm-hmm. But what happens when they're looking at it? Right. not. Yeah. And, you know, at least if not, you know, there, maybe someone else will know somebody. Hey, you know, I heard about this guy. You know, mm-hmm. if you need somebody for your show, you know, here you go. Because, you know, promoters right. talk, you know. Not all of them get along, but I know a lot of them talk, and, you know, they do. They really, promoters talk. Absolutely. Absolutely, do, no, but, that, I, I mean, as you said, there's a lot of uh, drama. But, of course. yeah, promoters do talk. Yeah, they, they do. They, they know, you know. So I don't, I don't think they'll, like, I don't feel like there's, like, a Facebook group. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, right? they, they will email each other, and they will talk in person, and they will, you know, over the phone and things, and, and connect, you know. Uh, so it's another thing to kind of spread your name, you know, out. So maybe even if the one promoter doesn't use you, the other one, you know, he might suggest you to someone else who needs someone in your area or, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then boom, there it is. That's, that's how it starts. Yeah. And that's there, how it starts. We get the ball rolling. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there's a lot of good wrestling going on. Um, so I do want to talk about, you know, some of the things you got going on. So, of course, you talked a little bit, you know, as you as a trainer of Warriors of Wrestling, but you're also the Warriors of Wrestling champion. Yes, I am. And you have, uh, coming up on July 9th at Ultimate Survival, you have a hardcore false count anywhere match against Logan Black, who is your friend slash sworn enemy, uh, yeah, right? you know, for the title. So this is kind of the culmination of, of this, like, kind of blood feud that you guys have going on. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm uh, really excited about this because uh, Logan and I have known each other literally from the day I stepped in wrestling school, Mm -hmm. which on June 10th was nine years. Mm -hmm. So for nine years, I've known Logan Black, and we've traveled together and been to each other's houses and know each other's family, and we've been in the ring together more times than I can imagine. Mm -hmm. So uh, not only am I excited, but the fans should be excited for what's going to be produced in that match because that's going to be exciting, and a lot of people... uh, might say that I am personally not a hardcore false can anywhere wrestler. Mm-hmm. I may not be, but Logan is. So I'm gonna have to take it to his world a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, what is your strategy kind of going into that? Is it just sort of wild? You know, just go with whatever you got, or do you have a strategy going into this match? I mean, I can't expose my strategy. Oh, that's that's true. You could you could <laughs> lie. You could lie and deflect <laughs> and be like, "Look, this is no, my strategy. It's really not." I plan on keeping my exciting style, mm-hmm. but altering it a little bit to uh, to maybe change this matchup to 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 get into that hard for false kind of anywhere element. I I promise, as long as the New York State Athletic Commission does not shut us down, mm-hmm. this will be one of the best matches in Warriors of wrestling history. Nice, nice. Well, well, that's I, a big if because the athletic commission, uh, uh, they fear Warriors wrestling. Really? Yeah, I was going to ask you because I'm going to. Wow, I, I'm going to get so much trouble for saying that. <laughs> Whatever. I was going to ask because you know sometimes like you know athletic commissions in different places are, are very strict. Like Virginia is very strict. Um, you know different places. So I was wondering how how New York was in, you know, in terms of like um, um, you know if there's blood or if there's like you know things like that. Oh, no, it works. Really? Do you have- oh, oh, yeah, there's, there's no other way to, to describe it. Wow. It works. Um, the New York State Athletic Commission uh, is using a rule book that was made in the 1930s. Wow. Which says there can only be one tag team match on a show. Really? Any wrestlers with masks must, must have their face exposed. There's only one women's contest per show. Um, so if you look at this rule book, it is totally nonsensical. And kind of, uh, they kind of make up rules as they go. Uh, a show, uh, uh, two and wrestling had a match shut down because there was too many dives and the, the athletic commissioner felt unsafe. Wow. And then he was kept inside the guardrail. Wow. 
There is nothing really? that would have hurt a fan or any competitor. We are trained competitors. Right. We are. We spend years perfecting our skills. So these athletic commissioners that don't understand professional wrestling, that are mostly boxing commissioners, for them to come in our house and tell us what we're doing wrong, mm-hmm. it's an insult because they don't understand. Um, they, they, I get heated on this subject. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they like to pull their weight. I mean, that, there's no better way to say it. They, mm-hmm. they like to pull their weight and they like to show their presence. And there's certain commissioners that are professional wrestling, former referees, and mm-hmm. understand the business. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, that certain commissioner is not allowed to officiate professional wrestling shows. Oh. <laughs> so that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. No, not at all. That doesn't make any so sense. The guy, who, the guy who gets it is not allowed to be there. But oh. the guy who has grown up in boxing his entire life, he's the one that is going to commission professional wrestling. So it's, it's 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 a very sore subject because wrestling is suffering because of it right now. We're mm-hmm. we're we're getting shows shut down and matches stopped that that don't need to be stopped, and it's just not right. Wow, I, I knew that there was. I know they were against, like for example, diving into the crowd, things like that. But I didn't realize it was so strict as to like you can only have like certain numbers of you know certain type of match, and I didn't realize they were that restrictive. They uh, they. They can be. They make up the rules. Like I said, they make up the rules as they go. I mean, like, some checkers will be super cool. Like, last show, the athletic commissioner almost, last warrior show, the athletic commissioner almost shut us down because wow. it was too hot in the building. Wow. So the temperature, apparently, is, is this woman's <laughs> jurisdiction. Wow. Oh. That's but, yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. Bottom line, they suck. <laughs> That is all. That is restrictive, and that's got to make it so difficult. I mean, and, and just just completely. Oh, that's got to be very frustrating. Oh, it is because you don't know, you you don't know what to do. You don't know how to go into a match because you don't know what's going to get your match stopped. Right. Yeah. How do you <laughs> how, how do you plan for that? You can't. Yeah, that's you can't. that's that's really difficult. Has has Warriors ever been shut down because of of that, or have you guys been lucky so far? What was that? Have you guys been lucky so far at Warriors or other Oh, games? absolutely not. Really? Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had our license revoked. Really? Oh, yeah. We had this huge thing going on where for a while, thank God, Tier 1 Wrestling was presenting Warriors of Wrestling. Right. Um, but, yeah, we had our license revoked for nonsense. Wow. Well, hopefully there won't be any nonsense coming up in, in July. You know, um, at no, we're back. Level, we're, so. we're back full force with right. our own license and everything. Right. Well, hopefully they won't try to shut it down because it's too hot. Because yeah, you know, yeah, it, it is right. the summer after all, and, and it does get hot in the summer. So you know, yeah, that's not allowed. <laughs> Apparently, summer's not allowed to exist. <laughs> Thanks. Summer's to not that. allowed. According to athletic commission, summer is not allowed. <laughs> Wow, that, that's some power when you can you know, determine what the season should be and, and the temperature. <laughs> that's a little crazy. Um, so, so after your 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 match with Logan and this sort of finale, this sort of end of this feud, what do you see, you know, going forward for you as, as you know, Warriors of Wrestling champion? Well, it was announced last show mm-hmm. that the winner of Logan Black versus Rude Boy Riley mm-hmm. will be taking on. Won Damian Sandow in what? August in Staten wow. Island. Wow, that's huge. That's a huge opportunity. That is. That is. So, uh, that is where I see myself. And, I don't know, there might be some big things on the horizon that I can't discuss yet. Right, of course. But, but, there might be some big things happening with the both Warriors Wrestling Heavyweight title and Tier 1 Wrestling Heavyweight title. Well, you know what? I, I wanted to talk about Tier 1 next, so I'm glad you mentioned it. So, so good luck. Well, look at that segue. I'm a yeah, segue that was, king. That was, that was it. I, we didn't even talk about that. That was just uh, beautifully, like, <laughs> ooh, that was wonderful. Um, so Tier 1 Wrestling is now celebrating its one-year anniversary, which it's, I can't believe it's only, it's, that year has gone really fast. Um, yeah, it has. It, it's crazy. So that's coming up, and that's going to be the next night. That's going to be on, on July 10th. 
Um, yep. Now, Justin May, you defended against Homicide, who is is really an, a legend in the Indies, you know, in the area. Um, oh, of course, I mean, He's a legend in general. Yeah, I mean, just um, a huge, huge win for you. Um, and now, you, in July, you're going to have a you're going to be in a tag team match. It's going to be Team Riley, so it's going to be you and Matthew Riddle, uh, who is an excellent wrestler who's starting to really make a name for himself uh, against Team Akuma, which is Gran Akuma and Darius Carter. Uh, yeah. And there's some really interesting stipulations in, in regards to this match. Uh, so if your team wins, um, then Riddle, Matthew Riddle, will get a title match against you. Uh, if Team Akuma wins, uh, if he wins the, the Tier 1 championship from you, then Darius Carter is going to have a chance. So, yeah. so some definitely some championship aspirations and, and gold, on, you know, golden ring uh, on the line in this match. Uh, yeah, let me just talk about tier one before I talk about the match. Oh, sure, absolutely. Um, so, as much as Warriors of Wrestling made Rude Boy Riley, mm-hmm. uh, there would be no Rude Boy Riley without Warriors of Wrestling. Mm-hmm. Tier one wrestling uh, lit the fire under Rude Boy Riley. Um, I would not be where I am today without tier one wrestling. Uh, that company has expanded my career more than I could have ever imagined. Um, they, they, they just generated such a buzz within that year, and mm-hmm. it's so cool to be such a big part of it. So, yeah, just wanted to get that out of the way. But that match is very exciting uh, for two wrestling fans. They know that Granit Kuma has been attacking me mm-hmm. after every match. Um, so I had to find a partner with Matt- Matthew Riddle, and, of course, that stipulation was added because one of the team was the champion to begin with, and I had to uh, put a little bit of stunt out there. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, it could be a good match, and you have four dudes in there that are just hard-hitting guys, that uh, f- four strikers, and, and Little and Akuma with their submissions, so you, you have a very, very good dynamic of guys in that match, and I, I think we're planning on uh, on. on that show. <laughs> I was say, considering the four, you know, guys in that with you and, and Akuma and Carter and Riddle, it just how can it not? <laughs> just yeah, yeah, talent exactly. one match. I'm gonna be a little cocky, but yeah, no, exactly. How can it not? <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and like I said, I mean, I'm very familiar with 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 all those guys, and uh, it's just it, it's amazing, you know. And uh, I don't envy you with Akuma on your 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 uh, nipping at your uh, heels. Uh, yeah, me neither. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling Grand Akuma this weekend for Blitzkrieg Pro. Oh, uh, it, it is the East Coast Bastard Crew of myself, Logan Black, and Jeremy Leary versus Grand Akuma, <laughs> and uh, and AJ Cruz and another partner. So yeah, I have a ton of Grand Akuma <laughs> matches coming up. I'm so sorry for you because he kicks so yeah. hard and yeah, brutal. yeah. But I knee really hard, so it's okay. <laughs> so it's okay. So you're hoping maybe if you knee him a few times before he gets to kick you, you know, maybe he won't have a chance to kick you. It might, it might just, yeah, it might, it might slow him down a little bit. <laughs> maybe just a little. <laughs> um, so now another company that you wrestle for, um, Destiny on Ontario. You talked about going to Canada, um, which is interesting. And you recently wrestled there. You wrestled Moose in an Extreme Rules yeah. match, and Santino yeah. was the ref. Yes, he was. Uh, what was that? I mean, first off, Moose is just blowing up. Um, so what was yeah, that? Yeah, there's, there's some big things happening for that guy, and I'm very happy because he is a generally just a good person. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, and then just being an Extreme Rules match with, with him and then and then with Santino thrown in is just, you know, how how was that like to, to work with, with, be around Santino? Well, let's put it this way, okay? Mm-hmm. So in that match... Mm-hmm. I was power bombed through a ladder, uh, hit with a kendo stick, oh. uh, thrown into a steel pole, into a turnbuckle. I got to kick me from the face with a garbage can and a chair and a kendo stick. Uh, and then I was hit with the dreaded cobra. I was going to ask if, if the cobra w- was in play. I would have, you know, I imagine so. I, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to take Santino out, steal the cobra, try to use it on Moose. Mm-hmm. That didn't work to my advantage. Uh, and then, of course, Santino, with his magical Cobra powers, <laughs> knocked me straight out with that Cobra. You know, honestly, the Cobra, he's still, he trains, you know, he's got, you know, he runs shows or whatever, so he's still, you know, actively 
doing a lot of stuff, so that cover oh, is still he's, really he's deadly. Physically, he's physically in the best shape of his life. Yeah. Besides his neck, that mm. man, he looks 